All right, hello, Honors 410. Uh, this will probably be my shortest video lecture of all for the semester. So first off, um, just in case this is relevant to anyone by the time they're watching this, a reminder, critical essays were due today at 11 a.m. Um, so please be sure to, to get those in if you haven't already. I uh, look forward to, to reading through those uh, in the next few days. Uh, in addition to that, um, I wanted to refer you to the video below. So there was no formal reading assignment for today. Um, um, because I've asked a lot of you in terms of reading, and also I want you to be able to focus your attentions on your critical essays going into today's class. Um, but instead, we are watching something. So if this were an in-person class, I would actually just screen this for the room, and then we would have a discussion of it for the remaining, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of class. Um, because of this uh, online asynchronous format, I'm just going to go ahead and post the video below. I'm going to give you a few kind of leading questions here, um, but then cut myself off and kind of kind of leave it at that for the discussion to be centered uh, just on what we've observed um, from watching this thing. So um, to give a little bit of context, uh, this is something that was written by Joss Whedon, who has become a bit of a, a controversial kind of problematic figure. Um, and so I wanted to you know, kind of take ownership over that in a similar way to the way I took ownership over uh, J.K. Rowling's kind of issues related to you know, Harry Potter. Um, Whedon himself, I'm not necessarily advocating for as a human being. Um, and it's a whole big conversation about whether we can actually divorce art from artist. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I, I will say, I think he's done some creative things. He was sort of the mastermind behind uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer as a TV series. Uh, Firefly is another popular series that, that he kind of uh, headed up. Uh, he wrote the original Avengers movie. Um, so, so, so things along those lines. He's had a lot of work that, um, whether you like him or not, has, he's been pretty important to pop culture uh, in the last, uh, you know, 30 some odd years or so. Uh, but in any event, uh, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, uh, this was a project that he headed up during a writer's strike when they weren't producing uh, any television, um, when kind of Hollywood had kind of grinded to a stop for a period of time. Um, they sort of did this thing in sort sort of a almost bootleg kind of fashion or a DIY kind, kind of way. So um, we didn't wrote the, the music and the script for this thing, um, but worked with some uh, actors and actresses who he had personal relationships with to get this thing made. Um, and it was released for free. Um, and originally in kind of these separate parts uh, as it's portrayed uh, in the video I'm posting below. Um, but the whole thing, if you want to watch it, uh, if, if I remember correctly, I don't know right in front of me, but it clocks in at about a half an hour. So it's pretty digestible, um, at least in my opinion. Um, one of the big reasons why I like sharing this with the class is in a class based on speculative literature and this idea of, you know, fantasy, science fiction, and magic, and how they can kind of play into um, things that are worthy of kind of critical study, um, I, we can't ignore the discourse about superheroes nowadays. Um, it's such a part of our pop culture now. Um, I know Dr. Lusty offers a 410 that maybe some of you have taken in the past or would like to take in the future, um, but more directly related to superheroes. So I don't like to devote a ton of class time to that, but nonetheless, I do feel it's relevant to our discussion here. So um, Dr. Horrible sing-along blog, um, I think it has a lot to say about kind of the nature of heroes and villains, and so I do want to leave that as uh, one point of discussion, is sort of what do we think this thing is ultimately saying about heroes and villains? Uh, do we agree with what it's saying? Can we relate to some of what it's saying? What, what do we make of that in general? Um, what's, what's the impact of the music here? Um, it is a short musical. That, that's how I would define it. Um, and so uh, what does the music add to this project? What makes it different? Um, what, what's interesting about it? Um, how do we feel um, emotionally coming out of this viewing experience? Because um, while I, I would say on the whole, I think it's funny, I would also say that every time I watch it, by the end, I feel pr pretty deeply moved. Um, maybe I'm more susceptible than that to some people or, or a little bit sappy, but nonetheless, I find a lot of students tend to agree with me that they're, they're kind of moved by it. But w overall, how you sort of feel uh, emotionally and how you think the project you know made you feel that way. Um, and otherwise, anything that grabs your attention uh, is of interest to you, maybe speaks to some of the other stuff we've been talking about in class up to this point. Uh, all of that is fair game in the discussion below. So, okay, so this is going to be short. I, I'm actually delivering on it. So um, we'll, we'll cap this at about five minutes here. Um, so please do watch through Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, participate in the discussion below, and we'll pick up next time uh, back with our assigned reading from the McBee book moving forward from that. All right, thanks everyone.